introduce you to Professor Schulman. Uh, she serves as the J. Joseph Mowgli Endowed Professor of Political Science uh, in Boston College. Uh, is the author of so many political science and elections books, some of them awarded. And uh, briefly, is a very distinguished scholar in political science and elections in the USA. So it's an honor to have you here today to chair. Thank you. I say that there are four rules about the rules. The rules of politics are rarely neutral in their political effects. If you want to know about the potential effects of a procedural reform, or in fact any policy, don't look at the general purpose or the title. Look at the details. Reformers seek results, but they get consequences, often unintended. Reforms often entail trade-offs, not between the bad and the good, but between the good and the good. And I'm really interested to hear the extent to which these abstract principles that are pretty useful for understanding American procedural disputes obtain for Latin America. So I'm very happy to be here. I'm going to go in the order that the names were listed in the program. So Lorenzo Cordova, then Jan Bosset, and then Manfredo Marroquin. Um, I've asked the, the presenters to limit their remarks to 15 minutes so that we can have plenty of time for discussion um, from the audience and so that we can stay on American time. <laughs> so, um, Senor Cordova, would you please lead off? Thank you so much, uh, Professor. It's an honor to be here. I really appreciate uh, very much and uh, thanks the, the, the invitation to share some of the, uh, uh, of the issues in Mexican uh, electoral system, which uh, uh, identifies it as one of the uh, uh, systems in which uh, finan uh, financiation to politi politics and uh, mostly uh, uh, oversight of uh, political incomes uh, and expenditures of political parties uh, is one of the main axes uh, uh, of our electoral system and one of the main issues uh, during the last at least three or four electoral reforms. Um, I, have a, I had a presentation, but I, I think it's much more longer than 15 minutes, so I will go on uh, uh, like this. Uh, doesn't work? Yeah, it's okay. Well, but anyway, I, 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 go, I, go, I go like this, don't worry. Um, well, I'd like to, uh, uh, to, to, sh to, 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 be, uh, to start saying that uh, uh, in, uh, in, in Mexico transition, in Mexico history transition, uh, uh, after we solve the problem of aperture and inclusion of uh, uh, political parties, which uh, back in the history were excluded, from the uh, electoral competition. And after we solve the problem of uh, uh, okay, it's okay. Yeah. And after we solve the, the, the problem uh, to have uh, 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 authentic electoral institutions uh, uh, impartial in their work and uh, uh, to establish, to set rules and procedures that guarantee the uh, free vote uh, at that vote as we said in the early 90s, really count. Uh, we had the problem of equity in competition, electoral competition, as one of the main uh, problems to solve with electoral reforms. Uh, the, the history, even if it's, uh, it, it goes beyond, uh, the real history of uh, uh, financiation, of the uh, rules of financiation, and mostly of the oversight of, uh, of uh, political uh, expenditures, uh, starts in the middle of the 90s when after uh, 1994 uh, presidential election uh, uh, in which for the first time there was a very early 
very young, very unsophisticated system of oversight of political uh, expenditures. Uh, but the first time in which was an official uh, uh, procedure, I mean, we have official data, uh, uh, we get that the president elected spend 85% of the whole electoral expenditures. So we had a problem on equity during campaigns. That's the aim of the reforms after, uh, uh, starting from 1996 and so on uh, that makes finance, uh, uh, po uh, political party financiation one of the uh, issues most uh, attended and most uh, regulated in our electoral system. In 1996, uh, were set the, the basis of the, uh, uh, of the financiation system, which uh, uh, still are still ruling, are still uh, uh, on foot. Um, the, the, the main access of the, of the, of the regulation in Mexico are the next one. First, the preeminence of a public funds. Uh, 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 despite the, the private funds are, are, are allowed, but regulated. Uh, second, uh, the, the, the public funds are used for three main aims. First, to get equity during competition, and that's why the, the, uh, the, the, the huge amount of public funds is distributed in a part, 30%, equally between political parties, and the, thir and the 70%, uh, 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 the other 70% is distributed uh, uh, according the electoral uh, uh, results in the last uh, representative election. Uh, and second uh, uh, place, uh, uh, public fund uh, uh, allows more transparency on the resources used by political parties because it's the main part of the resources. Actually, right now, in the last elections, uh, uh, almost 90% of the uh, resources that political uh, parties use during campaigns comes from public funding. Uh, and in third place, to get some uh, uh, or, or enlarge the autonomy and independence of political parties uh, from interest who stands always behind private funds. I'd like to say nobody who finance from uh, as, as a private uh, 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 politics is making philanthropy. So they had interests, interests, and uh, one way to you know hold those interests and their interference in politics is precisely uh, recurring to public funds, uh, public financiation. On the other hand, uh, since 1996, uh, were re-established, redeterminated the uh, prohibitions and the limits to. Uh, private funding. For instance, since the, uh, the 90s in Mexico, no corporation can uh, finance uh, a political campaign or a political party in general. No uh, uh, people who live abroad can finance uh, politics. No church, no priests, and so on. There are a lot of limit, uh, regulations uh, of the, uh, the private financiation. If we have huge amounts of public uh, uh, resources going to finance politics. And we have those limits for private financiation. Uh, it was inevitable to empower electoral authorities to uh, get uh, a real auditing powers, a real, a real oversight system. Uh, in 1996, uh, uh, the former IFE, Instituto Federal Electoral, receive uh, huge powers. Not uh, every electoral uh, institution around the, the world has these powers. They were uh, increased during the next reforms. And right now, the electoral authority uh, is a, 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 a very empowered uh, uh, institution uh, that, for instance, uh, has the, the power not just to review uh, uh, the financiation of campaigns, but also the financiation that political parties receives to their ordinary life. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and to do that, uh, the electoral authority has the power to transcend the bank secret, the uh, tax secret, 
and the uh, 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 fiduciary secret. So uh, electoral authority, without need any, uh, 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 in, uh, any, any power or any permission from a court, can directly ask the records of a bank, bank account or uh, the tax accounts on every people who has any relation, financial re relation with uh, political parties or ca any campaign. Uh, uh, most of that, uh, uh, since 2014 reform, the, refor the last huge electoral reform that transformed uh, former uh, electoral federal electoral institute to a national institute, the, uh, uh, the main reason of that reform is to uh, uh, create a national electoral system in which this national institution has the role of a, a, of a direct the whole uh, system and in the, in the matter of oversight has the authority to review whole the, account, the whole accounts of political parties, not just at the federal level, but also at some national level. So we review at the INE, uh, uh, all the, the, the expenditures and incomes uh, during federal and local campaigns. Um, to do that, uh, the, the, this reform, the 2014 reform, uh, obliged uh, uh, National Inst Federal Institute to uh, build an informatic system uh, in which political parties have to report on real time with a delay of no more than three days, every uh, 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 income, every uh, expenditure, and to support it, it with a fiscal uh, document. The system is a very robust system, it's a very huge system, uh, that helps the auditing of, uh, 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 powers that it uh, uh, has by law. Uh, uh, moreover, uh, since uh, 19, uh, 2014, the uh, trespassing of ceilings, of authorized ceilings uh, in, the, in the expenditures in our campaign became uh, a factor, a potential factor of annihilation of the campaigns. So uh, the review of the accounts, the, uh, the campaign accounts, uh, should be uh, 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 terminated, enter uh, the 40 days after elections. 45 days. So we have to do an online uh, uh, accountability uh, function and oversight uh, so the tribunals that qualifies elections can, could have re the results of the uh, uh, campaign expenditures uh, before they end their work. Uh, obviously that uh, uh, represents uh, uh, an enormous challenge for the electoral, National Electoral Institute. Just to give you an example, in this year, in 2018, we had the largest election ever bec uh, 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 among other uh, uh, things because we have the largest concurrency between federal and local elections. We had the three federal elections, Senate, President, and the, the lower chamber, uh, but we also have elections in 30 of the 32 states. So the amount of uh, uh, campaigns uh, uh, accounts that we have to review enter 40 days after elections was huge. Uh, in this year we review uh, more than 18,000 uh, 18, uh, reports. Uh, uh, obviously uh, political parties uh, uh, um, assume not the best practices to report, obviously. So uh, in many cases uh, uh, depend of the political party, but almost the 40% of the expenditures are reported uh, off time. So uh, uh, in some occasions after elections were held, uh, uh, so they uh, uh, try to uh, uh, complicate, you know, the, re the, 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 the revision of, of the HAL accounts, the HAL accountability from electoral party. Obviously there is a penalty, but they many times prefer to pay the penalty or to say it another way, uh, the penalty is already uh, 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 considered you know, in between the, 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 the whole electoral causes. Um, one last thing. We do not, we cannot depend, and I'm getting to the end, we cannot depend only uh, on, uh, on uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the fairness of the political parties 
in their uh, reports. So we do not depend only on what political parties uh, uh, report to the authority, but we all ha also have a, a, a ground review. So uh, during campaigns, we display a, 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 a huge amount of uh, people uh, uh, on the field who's uh, capturing and reporting all the issues of expenditure. Uh, they, uh, if, they, if a political party has some billboards or a campaign has some billboards, or they, they go and, and, and report what happens during rallies and meetings. You know, in Mexico, we have this uh, strange practice in which uh, during a, a rally, uh, there are uh, uh, bands and you know people who you know who plays and, uh, and, and, and some bands very expensive. So we report all that. All that. So we have we can compose what political parties report, or uh, with what we see as an expenditure uh, result in the field. And that's uh, why uh, during these campaigns, for instance, uh, almost uh, the twenty percent of the expenditures were unreported expenditures uh, detected by the electoral authority and uh, obviously uh, 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 penalized by, by, by us. Uh, I must say that uh, uh, this is a, a, a very robust uh, 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 oversight uh, uh, system. Uh, it's not easy to, we have a, a problem with the time, you know, to solve in 40% is very complicated, that's why in this uh, election, we improved for the first time not just an accountability system. I mean, we, there's not a, an accountability revision of the of the expenditures. We introduced uh, a new uh, model of risks, in which uh, uh, w I mean, uh, in in the, in the relation, and I'm really ending <laughs> uh, in the relationship with the with the bank, with the bankery system. Uh, we asked the. The financial institutions to report us any strange movement that sets in this sort kind of model of risk. It's very easy. We have the list of the whole uh, uh, public authorities at the federal, local, and municipal level. Uh, and we already have, because the state has already detected, you know, the f a ghost uh, enterprises. And uh, when in the weeks or a couple of months before campaigns, we detect a, a transfer of uh, public funds from one of those accounts to one uh, ghost uh, uh, enterprise. We uh, uh, follow day after day, day a day, we make a day a day track on how that, that uh, uh, ghost uh, 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 enterprise uh, expends that money during campaigns. It's a sort of kind to build a magnet to find, you know, a, a, the needle in the in the high stack, you know, uh, uh, and that's you know a, a, a way in, in which we are trying to improve and modernize uh, this uh, system, which is uh, working already pretty good. We have no delay until now, even if we had an, a, a huge a bunch of elections as never we had. Uh, uh, like this year, and uh, well, I, I mean, it's, it's not a, a perfect model, but right now, uh, I think it created uh, not just because of its capability to detect uh, unreported expenditures or incomes, but also because we create a sort kind of a, a, a content of ex exigence. We uh, we say a lot, we talk a lot about uh, this system. Uh, as a way, to, you know, to create, to inoculate, you know, uh, 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 unfair attitudes for, uh, by political parties. So I'm sorry because of the almost much. two minutes of delay, but thank you so much. for Klaus Center to for the invitation um, and uh, particularly 
to Daniela for the organization. Uh, I'm very glad to be here. It's an honor to, to be here and with the, that panel especially. Um, I, um, second, I, I, I want to apologize because I, I will have to, to present you a PowerPoint which is uh, everything that a PowerPoint uh, uh, shouldn't be. Uh, but my English is uh, is very is very French, so uh, <laughs> I would like to uh, to to um, to present the PowerPoint just yes I, I, just because uh, uh, you you need to understand what I say, <laughs> and and uh, and I would have to read the, my PowerPoint. I'm sorry, uh, and um, uh, mine is a bit of a um, um, a case study about Colombia. Uh, but uh, I will try to make it interesting, not, not only for Colombia. And I'm very glad that, that I, uh, I speak um, after Lorenzo Cordoba because uh, the Colombian case is, is quite um, legally um, the, quite the same uh, as Mexico, but uh, it is a system uh, uh, which doesn't work, except it doesn't work. <laughs> and and we, will sh uh, we will see why. Um, yesterday, uh, Professor Pipanoris showed us um, uh, that in uh, electoral integrity in Latin America, Latin America is quite well, I think, uh, comparatively um, with uh, other region of the world. But the main problem that uh, we see in Latin America is uh, the problem of financing. Um, and Colombia may be... Uh, um, an illustration of, the, of this trend topic, but uh, what I will argue is that uh, really the, the problem, okay, the problem is a problem of financing, but really it is not uh, a problem we can solve by a uh, legal reform about, uh, about financing. It's a problem we should address uh, um, on, on other topic, via other topics, which are in the case of Colombia, uh, another uh, topics that we discussed yesterday, uh, which is the uh, electoral authority and the origin, the political origin of the electoral authority with uh, uh, Miriam and Gabriela. Um, uh, and uh, the problem of electoral law, because um, I, I think Colombia has quite a, a, a fine uh, legal framework about financing, but it doesn't work because of, of the the the, nat the nature of the uh, electoral authority and the nature of the legal the, um, the, the the electoral system. So let's see. Uh, there is a, a sort of paradox um, with, with the Colombian system, and and the paradox is that uh, Colombia has adopted earlier constitutional and legal framework, wh which is quite fine, quite modern, quite sophisticated, but it has been largely. Uh, mainly ineffective to avoid major scandals uh, about um, about financing, uh, campaign financing, uh, and it has been ineffective because really um, it has been adopted on a reactive form uh, with the pressure of drug trafficking uh, and uh, 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 illegal armed group, uh, which has have tried, of course, to to interfere with politics uh, in Colombia. So the consequences of that uh, uh, character, um, 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 uh, reactive character of the, of the framework is that it is quite unrealistic to, to really be effective. And uh, it didn't reform the electoral authority, as I said, and, and this is the main problem uh, and the main reason why it doesn't work. And um, it, uh, um, it is inadequate with uh, other norms, particularly uh, the electoral system. Um, the uh, Colombia have known three major scandals about financing, political financing, political campaign financing, which are uh, one early scandal, the, the Proceso Ocho Mil, when uh, President Samper was uh, convinced uh, uh, President Samper campaign was convinced to receive uh, money from uh, uh, Cali drug cartel. Uh, it was the main, the major scandal in, in political life in Colombia during the 90s. Uh, then uh, one, decade, uh, one decade after, the, the other scandal was parapolitica when uh, uh, paramilitary militias uh, also um, um, financed uh, political activities uh, 
of course, illegally. Um, it, it was not only a scandal about uh, political campaign financing, but it has this component too. Yeah. And now, uh, in this decade, uh, we, we have all, just like many other countries, the Odebrecht uh, scandal, uh, but uh, uh, the difference with Peru, for example, is that uh, we have no uh, uh, former president or former presidential candidate in jail or, or, or prosecuted for that, even if we know that, in, uh, that the two main presidential campaigns in uh, 2014 has been financed by Odebrecht indirectly. Um, so. Uh, it was with that scandal that the legal framework uh, has been implemented in, uh, in Colombia. And uh, Lorenzo uh, just said that in Mexico, the, the, frame, the legal framework starts in 1994. In Colombia, it starts before. It starts in 1985, uh, um, um, really, with the principle of uh, uh, with a law which said the principle of the of the of the system, then well, this is the the steps, uh, uh, the important steps about this legal frame, framework, and uh, the the important law is the 1475 uh, of uh, 2011, which is the 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 law which regulates um, the campaign financing and accountability system in in, in Colombia. Uh, so how should it work? It's a, it's a, it's a system we, which is very, very, um, uh, very the same that, that Mexico, I, I suppose. Uh, the system is mixed, public-private funding of electoral campaign. The electoral authority determines a top ceiling of uh, spending for every campaign. Um, and uh, there is public funding of, of the campaign in, uh, with a system of, of advances, ex ante, be, uh, before the, the campaign begins, and of refunds uh, in function of the votes that every campaign can get. Uh, um, in, in the case of the presidential election, uh, private funding cannot exceed 20% uh, of the ceiling, so it is uh, preeminently public uh, funding for presidential campaign, as you see, with individual donation, which can't be no more than 2% of the ceiling, each one, and the self or family funding no more than 4% of the ceiling. So it's a very restrictive system, which is uh, aimed at, at controlling uh, really that, that sort of campaign. And uh, for other elections, uh, private funding can uh, include donation limited to 10% of the ceiling each. Um, private donations are prohibited from stranger person of organization, non-democratic terrorist or criminal organization as it is logical, and um, natural or legal person who earns incomes, uh, 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 half of their income from the state. Uh, and in the case of the presidential election, the campaign may not receive a donation, uh, um, uh, may receive donation only from natural uh, person, not for uh, corporation, organization, and so on. So in Colombia, supposedly, we could not have something that the national, something as the National Rifle Association financing campaign or something like that. So it is a framework quite restrictive, but why does it not work? Well, because the, the ceiling fixed by the electoral authority are not realistic in, Col uh, in Colombia. For this year, they were um, about uh, 30 million for a campaign in Senate uh, for each party list, uh, which is some um, $300,000 for an individual campaign because uh, uh, each list is of uh, 100 candidates. Um, and for the first round of the presidential election, the ceiling was $8 million and $4 million more for the second, second round. Uh, the experts estimate, um, we, we, re we really don't know, but um, the, the estimation is, uh, 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 says normally the, the bottom uh, uh, estimation may be that a, a campaign for the Senate an individual campaign may cost something like at least $1 million, which, is, uh, um, uh, uh, which means that the, um, the official ceiling is uh, heavily underestimated the real cost of campaigns in Colombia. So uh, 
so the, the legal framework I, I, is not working because really I, it underestimates our cost. Um, in fact, the electoral authority and the treasury department uh, d don't realize the, the financial studies they should realize to, to fix the ceiling and they do it only uh, um, in, in function of uh, the availability of, uh, of money by treasury, by uh, Ministerio de Hacienda and, and no more. Um, well, so, um, uh, bueno, to, uh, to, to access public fund advances, you need an insurance poli uh, policy that the financial system will not allow to small parties and candidates, uh, or which will be, be very expensive for them, so, um, so it is not really fair uh, as a system. Um, the, uh, moreover, the money comes late, it is a very difficult administrative process to have it, uh, so, um, in, uh, in this election, in the past election of the first uh, semester, um, only one candidate at the presidential level uh, asks for advances and only two parties for a legislative election. So, it really doesn't work. Um, um, and, um, or, or, or it works only by refunds, and, and by refunds, or, of course, the, the system, the public spending is only uh, for the winners of the election uh, 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 a posteriori, um, with a, a, a refund of one dollar and a half uh, a vote for, for uh, every uh, uh, type of election if you, uh, if you reach a threshold of 4% of the vote for the presidential candidate and as the legal result to win seats for the, the uh, list uh, for a le legislative election. So as a result, in fact, the campaigns are funded by private donation, uh, whose origin is very difficult to determine, to control, and bank loans refundable by public financing via uh, refunds. Uh, the problem is that the National Electoral Council um, is the administrative authority in charge for controlling the campaign financing, um, parties and candidates must report their campaign account registers uh, to the, the, the um, Na National Electoral Council, but um, uh, parties and candidates which fail to do it may incur an administrative sanction, which is not a, um, a legal offense, so the, judi um, the judicial system won't enter to, 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 to make sanction. It is only the, the, an administrative sanction from the electoral uh, uh, National Council, um, except in second instance, uh, and the, 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 um, the administration of the, the Electoral National Council is too weak to control every campaign in, in real time, uh, just like it can do it in Mexico. It can only do, uh, do random controls of the account uh, registers uh, because it has no administrative staff to do it. Uh, um, so it can it can sh check uh, uh, in in real time the, the the account and it can sh check the reality of expensive because it has no territorial uh, presence just like uh, the, the 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 INE in Mexico uh, uh, can have. Um, uh, the result is that only 18% uh, of the parties report their account and they declare only 22% of the ceiling. Uh, we, which means that, that they really don't declare what they spend. Uh, it's, it is ridiculous what, what they declare, really. It is not reflected the reality of the expenses. And uh, the, 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 the National Electoral Council won't really uh, check the, that account. Um, and, um, and, and even if uh, the National Electoral Council could materially do it, uh, it, it wouldn't do, do it because he has a, a political origin. Uh, the nine CNE magistrates are elected by the Congress on a proportional bus system, okay? Um, so, um, so really, uh, uh, the CNE is elected by the actor is supposed to, to, to uh, check, to control, so, so, so uh, it, it won't do it. 
And uh, the second problem, uh, as I said at, at the beginning, is that the electoral system is unaccountable. Why? Because it, it's the, sa the same problem of the um, subprime crisis, where when you want to make a system uh, no accountable, you, you just have to make it more complex. Uh, um, a majoritarian, uninominal, first pass the, pass the post system is accountable because it's simple. A proportional integral system is simple, but a, um, um, a system like the Colombian one, which is proportional with preferential vote, is a complex system. Uh, really, the, the electoral authority have to check 2,700 candidates campaign, assuming really that the parties are the responsible for, 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 for the, the, the accountability of the system, but in practice they are not. The candidates, the individual candidates are, and the party only presents the, the uh, consolidation of, of, the, of the account of every candidate. But this is not realistic. They really don't check what, what the, the candidates say. So um, the, 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 the main reform, the, the best reform that we can do in, Col in Colombia is not really a reform about the legal framework of financing, is an electoral reform to suppress um, uh, the preferential votes, just like one which is just, uh, just now discussed in the Congress and which could be the best way to, to make the system more accountable, and I will uh, um, uh, uh, stop here uh, because I am passing time. Uh, muchas gracias. Okay, good morning to everyone. Um, first, I would like to thanks the Cloud Center and the co-sponsor institutions for this invitation to all the staff that made this possible. Uh, first, I would uh, refer to, to the Guatemala case. Um, we also have, a, I think this is the, the, financial, uh, the, the financial system of, of the political parties in their campaigns is the weakness the, the, the yeah the most weak the main weakness of the process uh, for integrity electoral process and uh, but we have a, an experience that is very interesting in the last election that I would like to share with you so first um, I would like to refer to the this concept of the black box that Daniel Sobato and many other experts refers to the tool where all the maneuvers and, mov and movements are registered to re in regarding to the fi financial operations of the political parties. In many cases, like in Guatemala, this black box stays inaccessible for citizens and it's only partially reviewed by the electoral authority. Uh, I would like to share a case with uh, this black box, black box, box was open it for the first, very first time in the last election, and what was found inside and the main effects that follow. Um, as confirmed by Electoral Perception Index in Guatemala, the parameter of political financial was the least transparent factor in the electoral process. In fact, there was almost nothing institutional or no institutional control over it. Um, Although some basic norms were established, such as mandatory reports to the authority about incomes and expenditures in the, in the, to control the ceiling limits of the spending. Uh, we don't have a robust system like the, in Mexico also. And also we don't have a very complex system like Colombia, it's in the middle. Uh, the black box was opened by accident as a result of several criminal investigations carried out by the Commission Against Impunity in Guatemala. Maybe you have heard about us, this unique, uh, this unique commission, uh, about, which is uh, sponsored by United Nations, and it is in, in was created ten years ago to support national institution in its capacity to investigate high-level crimes performed by clandestine and powerful groups. 
In 2015, an investigation run by CICIG linked the, by, linked the vice president and after uh, sometime also the president as chiefs of a smuggling network that operates in, ne in the customs in the main ports of the country. As a result, both were expelled of power and sent, in, and sent to jail. The further investigation uh, of this and other cases revealed the participation of many high official, public officials, including ministers, presidential candidates, mayors, congressmen, uh, business persons, in, bar in various and corrupt cases that involve uh, not registered campaign financial, financing. Empower, um, empowered by the support of the public and the high approval of CICIG work, the electoral authorities start to auditing the reports presented, presented by the political parties. To which, do, to which the accused persons were affiliated. As a result, for the moment, four political parties have been canceled, including the, government, uh, the govern, governing party of the former administration, 2012-2016, uh, while six more are in the administrative process of cancellation, including, again, the actual ruling party and the main opposition in the, in the actual period. More than 600 high public officials and business persons had been in, indicted for several crimes, among them illicit public financing. Opening the black box confirmed a widespread perception that a lot of the money spent by political parties in their campaigns was product of corruption, and also that the money coming from other sources was being paid in public contractings and other direct benefits to the donors. Saying all, saying all, all that, the question is, can a political and economic elite bear the truth of the black box that the black bo box contains? The cases of Guatemala and also Brazil, I think, indicate that having released such information can provoke Contra, contraproductive results. In Guatemala, the citizens turn to vote for an outsider candidate without any political background and reject in, in rejection in reject of the traditional politics. And it's him now which ha, which today is leading the expel of the East Commission that has investigated all the cases, CC after an investigation revealed the participation of his own son and brother in fraud in a fraud case happening in the in the previous administration only last week congress approved to eliminate the illicit anonymous electoral finance crime preventing that all the politician and private uh, and private anonymous donors touch jail for the crimes they have committed the consequences of opening this black box had positive short-term effects, mobilizing, uh, mobilizing, mobilizing a big group of, of the society against this modus operandi of politics, but the lack of leadership, which would deepen the fight against corruption, contribute, contribute to the disappointment and the disaccreditation of many citizens in politics and in the democratic institutions, opening the path to messianic and populist uh, leadership. So uh, this is the, the case of Guatemala. We are now in the very in a backlash. Uh, all, the, all the norms that make possible, we had the norms, but there was no implementation of them. When the implementation was achieved by CICIG, well, all the elites react, they join together, and now they are pulling back all the reforms and trying to avoid, you know, um, trying to avoid uh, to eliminate this status quo and also to avoid the, the, pro the legal processes that they have against it. So we're in a very, now, very uh, complex situation. We have elections next year. 
uh, we have new norms approved uh, two years ago, and uh, for the first time we have a, a more robust system, uh, and we will see, but we see a lot of risks because the actual government now is trying to blame that the elections are going to be intervened because CICIC is working with the uh, electoral authority in in trying to uh, in trying to create uh, more robust capacities for the electoral body to oversight the the financial area. So we are now in this. Uh, the president has uh, announced the end of CICIC next year. Of course, people don't want that. Seventy percent of the people is in favor of CICIC all the international community, the donors of CICIG, because CICIG is paid by donors, especially the U.S., who is the main supported, and now is the main supported also support also for the government to close it. So it's very crazy, uh, very crazy uh, politic, because they are supporting something that people want, something that has, has given results, but now the actual administration of the U.S. is backing the president in his attempt to close it. So we have this. Uh, of course, this is uh, the beginning of the of a biggest battle in the next in the next months. So thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Um, I was really interested, not only in the three different systems, but in the diversity with which they constrain and seem to work. And the extent to which they embody some different principles than that which obtain in the United States. I wanted to ask you if you wanted to, if you had any comments for one another before we open it to the audience. Do you? What? One minute comment. Yeah, please. Oh, I, I, I think the three cases we heard this morning uh, has m m a lot of things in common, but I think it, there is a, 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 a lot of difference and in, uh, uh, institutional strength and strengthness, but uh, and uh, and ways to solve it with international support, as in Guatemala and so on. But um, I think there is a, a transversal a transversal problem we are facing on. And uh, I, I, I like to make a statement in this sense. Um, electoral corruption cannot be uh, comprehend uh, isolated. I mean, electoral corruption is as, as part of a, a huge corruption system. In Mexico, we're facing that. We have, uh, 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 despite all the, the, the advances we have achieved, in particularly in an electoral, uh, 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 in the electoral dimension, uh, um, it's a very peculiar. Mexico is the only case in which all, uh, all the Brecht has been uh, revealed, you know, uh, 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 as part of the, you know, this transnational uh, problem in Latin America, and it's the only country in all the Latin America that other Brecht has not uh, still legal consequences. What I meant is. In Mexico, and that's uh, it's very peculiar, because we have uh, uh, huge advances in uh, uh, electoral overseen, oversight, but uh, uh, practically non-advance in the uh, rest of the uh, uh, cor uh, corruption fight or for the fight against corruption. And uh, well, we already know many of the electoral uh, 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 cases we discovered are linked with uh, all the cases of public corruption. We have a problem, obviously, uh, a huge problem with narco-traffic. But I, despite what many uh, observers and, and scholars says, without any solid evidence, I think the main problem in electoral corruption is not you know, the, the, the money that comes from cartels and so on, it's the problem that public officers used to finance politics and political parties. Uh, that's why our, our risk model 
points precisely in following and tracking the route of public funds. And that's, I mean, but, but, I, but I wanted to point this. I mean, electoral corruption, the problems of a legal public, uh, political financiation fin uh, must be uh, understand, understood as part of a huge corruption system, a uh, public corruption system. No? Yeah, just to support the, this statement raised by Lorenzo, in in the Guatemala case, all the all the um, cases of illegal uh, financing uh, political parties are were were um, uh, discovered by another cases, not in, not investigate not investigating the the reports. Of the of the political parties, um, so uh, this is a big true. I mean, the electoral corruption is part of a huge system of corrupt of corruption. Uh, we there we have cases where banks are involved, uh, managers of banks. We have the main uh, constructive construction companies involved. We have uh, uh, the biggest companies also of Guatemala. Uh, involved in, fina in in illicit illicit financiation because in in the in the electoral law uh, of Guatemala uh, the anonymous anonymous contributions were illicit as the criminal uh, as as the money coming from uh, illicit or uh, criminal groups uh, the same so that's why the that's what the Congress changed last week saying that the Anonymous contributions are not more illicit. Uh, they are just uh, uh, like a, um, a, a, a small penalty, administrative penalty, not uh, for jail. So, so the, the the big problem in in the case of Guatemala is that uh, instead of having a press a new because. The election of the actual president happened between all these all, all these crises, and if he could uh, just uh, follow a set of reforms to 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 make the administration, the public administration, more transparent, we would have really a new situation in the country. But he instead joined the. All the impl all the all the groups that were implicated in the in these corrupt cases, because his son and his brother also uh, happened to be in one of these cases. So now we uh, are, as I said before, we are in a uh, in a case where we are seeing backlash instead of improvements. Um, uh, there, there is effectively uh, um, an institutional problem which in the case of Colombia is very difficult to resolve because the institution which, which could resolve it is the Congress and the Congress won't uh, want to, to, to lose its uh, faculty to, to, to elect the members of the National Electoral Council. But uh, because uh, electoral corruption is, is part of a bigger system, uh, 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 we have good news this year because uh, there, there was an initiative of civil society uh, to try to make the system more transparent. Uh, uh, with the, the leadership of the uh, electoral observation mission of Alejandra Barrios, which uh, w w is there wi with uh, with us, and maybe she will told uh, told you about that uh, later. Um, th there was a pact with uh, a businessmen, corporation, and so on, uh, trying to to force politic uh, political to 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 reveal uh, all their account and finance.
financing uh, political campaign, but with the condition that uh, it would be more transparent and and, uh, and and trying to help to 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 have to assume a positive. Uh, role in in, the, in this way. So uh, this initiative of civil society are, are also important to to, um, to to resolve the problem, and we shouldn't think that only with institutional reform we, we can achieve a, a more transparent system. We can now um, open it up to the audience for questions and discussion. Yes. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, um, could you, maybe you all know each other, but could okay, you introduce yourself? My name yourself? is Miguel Rabasa. I'm the General Council of Mexico here. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, yesterday, in the opening session by Professor Pipa Norris, uh, we talked about um, electoral integrity. And in that presentation, uh, Mexico uh, was classified as moderate um, uh, together with Bolivia, El Salvador, Belize, Bahamas, Guyana, Paraguay, Suriname, and Ecuador. Whereas Colombia was classified as high in uh, electoral integrity. I question this classification, and I'm sorry that she isn't here now to um, uh, respond to my critique, but I did announce yesterday that I was going to bring the subject today when um, uh, Mr. Cordova would be here. I, I did say it yesterday. So I question how come, um, even more so after the recent election we had in Mexico, could um, Mexico be classified together uh, with a country, for example, such as Bolivia, that has um, presented several constitutional reforms to keep the executive in power almost indefinitely. I mean, um, but the response was that um, it was because of the um, violence and, okay, but the, the violence, what we have to, to uh, measure is if that violence about the war, uh, the drug war, is uh, having an impact, a negative impact in um, electoral integrity. And it doesn't, it didn't. Whereas financement does have and a huge impact in um, electoral integrity. I mean, I can't foresee a system that could be taught as uh, high in electoral integrity, whereas we have just heard the very honest presentation by Mr. Um, the, the, the Mr. Uh, Jan Basset, uh, uh, who has revealed to us all the problems that the Colombian system has and the scandals of San Pedro Uribe, etc., uh, which some of us knew about. So, um, whereas the Mexican financial system might not be perfect, it might not be um, absolute perfection, but as has been explained here by uh, uh, Mr. Corva, is a system that has been building, engineering a seal, a seal against uh, corruption. Um, that is ramping the, the country. So I like I would like to uh, have your comments, uh, Mr. Cordova, about this classification because I think it, it is and it was very misleading, and it questions the very basics and assumption of the model of electoral integrity in which a country like Mexico is ranked uh, middle and a country like Colombia is ranked high. And this panel has demonstrated exactly the opposite. Thank you very much. I was directly involved by, uh, by the question of, of uh, uh, Council Rabasa. Well, I, I appreciate the question, and it is, it's a, a huge opportunity to me here to get a response uh, to this uh, uh, Professor Pipanori study. Uh, which I think, it's my point of view, and obviously I respect a lot Professor Norris, but I have a, a, a difference, a substantial difference uh, with her uh, and his staff uh, with this study, not because of the methodology, but because of the fact, 
and that's a main difference, that she built the whole integrity, electoral integrity index on perceptions. And uh, I think electoral integrity goes beyond perceptions. If I'm not wrong, uh, in the study, we, Mexico achieved the same level, isn't the same level of electoral integrity that Cuba, which is absurd from my point of view. And I do not question that many Cubans assume that uh, it's democracy or it's election, this electoral system, from his perspective, from his perception, is quite good. And, and I would like to point a, a, an issue that just came as a notice before, uh, after elections, after last elections. Uh, poll studies, several poll studies, reveals that right now, after the, first of, uh, the, the, the July the 1st elections, 72% of Mexican people assumes that INE has played a good or a very good role on elections. Probably, if the uh, uh, Professor Norris uh, uh, study uh, 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 would repeat it right now, Mexico would rise from its uh, 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 electoral integrity uh, uh, rate, rating. But that's absurd because we have the same conditions that we had one year ago. We had the same electoral system the electoral authorities, we are the same. So we have a main problem. I, I do not question the intention, the aim, and the methodology of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of that study. But for instance, no electoral authority were consulted to build this uh, 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 rating in Mexico. And I don't think you, you can build or you should build an electoral integrity index just consulting electoral authorities. But I don't think either that you can build an electoral integrity index without consulting electoral authorities. I mean, I think we have a problem. You, 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 you talk about violence. I mean, I think it's a mistake to assume that elections in Mexico detonate violence. We have a, a huge violence uh, problem as a structural problem, as well as poverty, as well as uh, 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 inequality, as well as uh, corruption, as well as impunity. And that affects, those structural problems affect whole the areas of social life, even elections. But I'd like to say, when, when people, uh, uh, I mean, which is a great, a great problem. I mean, I, I'm not trying to underestimate uh, 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 the violence problem. But the violence were there before elections. Last year, even before elections started, was the, uh, uh, the year, the, 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 the bloodiest year, if we think on the number of, uh, of uh, assassinated people, the largest ever in our history. What I like to say is that violence was, was there, is there, and elections should be run in that context. Violence is not something that, vi that elections provoked. And obviously, by the way, I heard, uh, uh, I have noticed of, what, uh, of the numbers that Professor Norris uh, uh, managed yesterday. She said more than 100 candidates were killed, which is not true. There were only 27. Yeah, there were only 27 candidates or pre-candidates no, running for in, in primary elections who were killed. Just one is enough to say we have a problem. I agree. Yes, we had more than 100 politicians killed during the electoral uh, uh, time. But it happens all the time, which is not a problem of elections or electoral integrity. It's a problem of violence in a country who has who, who still not solved that problem. And uh, by other way, but on the other hand, no one, and, and, and I, I end with this, no one has evidence that even those 27 candidates were killed because of their electoral activities. INE could, uh, could, could install, hold the polling station 
despite the violence. No polling stations were not installed because of the violence. We had to deal with the crime, we have to deal with the organized crime, we have to deal with violence. I'm not saying it is, it is easy, and of course it's a problem. But I think we cannot, if we want to, to, to point how to solve our problems, we cannot mix issues. Violence is not a problem of electoral integrity, at least not in Mexico. It affects elections as well as it affects all the social areas, no? Yeah, it's, uh, I agree, it's, it's a problem because uh, the, the uh, electoral integrity index is, is about perception and expert per perception, uh, so, so it is effectively a, a problem. And the other problem is that it is a, a ranking. We love ranking, university <laughs> rankings, and uh, it's, it's yeah. very popular. But, but it can't really be a ranking because it, it, it's, a, uh, it's about a consultation uh, of experts, national experts, uh, w which impressions are heavily dependent of the, the national context and, um, and the, the, the trajectory, the evolution of the national context. So it is not really comparable between countries. So, so making a ranking with that is... I think very difficult. I, it is interesting because uh, on national studies you can see what what is the problem on the uh, eleven topics w w which are uh, the, the the base of the of the of the index. This is interesting, and and the evolution of the, of a country is interesting in time, but comparing countries when you uh, when you 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 really ask experts country by country is really very very difficult. Um, in these uh, tools where are made by perception, it's, it's the same problem always in, in Transparency International. Uh, we have the AP, uh, IPC, APC, Index of Perception of Corruption. And also there is al always a big debate between all the chapters of because uh, most of the chapters are not agree with the result in their own country of the index. And you have examples, for example, in Singapore, they, uh, they always score very high, but Singapore is not a democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, but it scored high in transparency. Mm -hmm. So the, the people say, how can you score transparency, it's high transparency in, uh, in an authoritarian regime? I mean, it's so it's uh, it's always complex to these uh, results measured by perception. It's Another question? Yes. Um, I'm Carmen Alanis. I'm, I'm uh, the director of the Center for Mexican Studies of the National University of Mexico. Um, thank you very much for this panel, very interesting to, to compare and have different scopes of finance, and public and private finance. I'm more pro-public uh, funds because it's more transparent and you know where the funds come from and you have also more capacity and attributions, competences to go uh, and to supervise the use of those funds. I think uh, dealing with public funds is easier for the electoral authority to do more and investigate more and go deeper. But on the other hand, and I have no doubt about it, the Mexican system has gone to the very extreme of complications. Mm -hmm. Because as, as President Cordova mentioned, it's millions of reports, daily reports, they are receiving, I mean, in all the electoral uh, commissions and, and institutes, you are receiving millions of, of, of accounting papers. And you have to put lots of money as well as authorities to supervise this. But in Mexico, it's, I mean, I. I experienced that from the court, and 
and you remember, Lorenzo, that we declared in a public session, in a formal ruling, that it was impossible. No. Because we didn't have, it was impossible for you to have the final report, report timely before the qualification of the election. So we said we will uh, rule and decide with what we have, what was possible to in it. So it is uh, a double side uh, uh, problem. And political parties are paying a lot of people and structures to find out new forms of violating <laughs> this yeah. system. So it's it's becoming like very difficult. What what do you think is the best solution? To reimburse or transparency or what? Because we cannot increase more these structures. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, you have a point. Uh, the more rules we improve, the more ways to violate the rule the political parties explore. And it's a never-ending story. That's why I think, I mean, if you, you ask me which will, should be the future of the electoral oversight, I would say to be not alone. I mean, as I said, corruption is a system, and it has a phase in the uh, 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 during campaigns, during electoral uh, 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 ambience. No, so I think the problem we have is to make controls. So in in the other areas, I mean the tax area, in the anti, uh, uh, I mean the Unidad de Inteligencia Financiera, which controls or fight, you know, the illegal financiation from cartels, or the the, the oversight on the public funds, which is very weak in Mexico. And the problem right now is that everything is uh, 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 going on and the expectation grows a lot on uh, electoral oversight. We have a lot, we have, we've been asked to review, uh, you know, uh, illegal contracts, in the case of the state of Mexico, for instance, which has nothing to do with elections. I mean, uh, the, over, the, the electoral oversight is probably the best anti-corruption uh, 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 measure that works in Mexico. So everything, everybody points in there. And the expectation is huge. And we, uh, as the expectation is huge, we have new rules every time. And we get complicated, that, that, that system. So I think maybe you, you had a point. To get simple, the oversight, uh, the electoral oversight. But to get that, we must improve the oversight the, in, the, in the rest of the managing and uh, reviewing and accountability on the uh, rest of the, of the public finances. No? I think we have time for one more question. Brief. Anyone? Yes? In the um, back. Oh, I'm sorry. In the back? Um, no, sure. I, Bill Hauser, graduate student in international relations cybersecurity at Harvard. I was not here yesterday, so I missed the discussion about, um, uh, well, actually, I, I see now in the chart, perceptions of electoral integrity. My question is, if this concept is somewhat flawed, what might be more appropriate metrics? What would be uh, a better means by which to measure integrity, electoral integrity? Is there something that would cut across uh, 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 each of the democracies that would work as a standard? <laughs> well, I, th I think all the comparative exercises are, are very useful. Obviously, as Jan said, 
you must take in account that uh, you're in many, in many times, in many occasions, you, you, you are trying to compare realities and, uh, 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 which are not necessarily comparable on one hand. On second hand, I think it's very useful to have an electoral integrity index. My point is you cannot base it only on perception. Because in Mexico we have a problem. I'm sorry I, 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 I'm, getting, I, I'm going back to Mexican example. By far, Mexico is the country in the whole Latin America which invested in the last 25 years more money, more human resources, and more political efforts on building its electoral system, by far. But if you see another index, the Latino Barometro Index, I mean the index, uh, the index of satisfaction with democracy, Mexico is in the lower places. Not only Mexico, paradoxically, is one of the countries which people is considering in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the largest amount or the largest, not, not the largest, but one of the largest amounts in Latin America, that in, in Mexican elections there is a fraud. I mean, it's a paradox. And it's a problem of perception. Because that perception, in many cases, in Mexico at least, is provoked by the irresponsibility of electoral actors. In uh, uh, Felipe Gonzalez, the former prime minister, Spanish prime minister, 20 years ago, came to Mexico and uh, 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 pronounced a conference, no? uh, 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 a lecture, called the acceptability of, defi of defeat as condition of, of the democratic uh, fun functioning. Uh, no? And the problem in Mexico is we, uh, uh, I mean, and you can find cases all around the, the political spectrum. All the political parties, at least one time, one, one time, at least one time, in the past, has rejected the result and accuses of fraud. If your integrity, uh, electoral integrity index is based only in, in perception, we have a problem. You have to improve on other issues, material issues, d d hard data, and not just perception. That's my point. <laughs> So, sorry, just just one one note. Um, it's it's really a, a big big question, and uh, uh, I, I would say it's it's important to have broad uh, national compar comparison uh, worldwide with with that such a type of, of index of uh, electoral integrity. But we we may have we we should focus also on national case and on small scale comparison between uh, between uh, countries that are really more comparable but with a, with a more profound study because that's, that indexes are uh, to, to be comparable on a, on a, a worldwide uh, scale they, they have to be very simple and to over simplify uh, and, 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 and and disappear the context so so we need um, uh, medium scale comparison on a regional basis and on a more qualitative uh, uh, perspective I think too. perspective as a student of as an American politics. One thing that we really haven't talked about, and that when we talk about money in politics, we're very concerned about corruption, the extent to which public officials trade favors for, um, for campaign contributions and the like. In the United States, we have an additional problem, and that is the federal courts have defined money as a form of speech. And therefore, it is the unregulated donations to campaigns are enormous. I mean, one very wealthy individual can donate as much as the Colombian uh, elections are supposed to cost. <laughs> now, <laughs> we learned that they probably don't cost what they're supposed to cost. But in fact, in the um, American system, and it's, it's, it's in front of us. Very, very wealthy people can give huge amounts of mm -hmm. money. And they're not really expecting kind of narrow favors or um, uh, 
you know, performance as the result of their contributions. What they're doing is having multiple votes. We all only get one vote when we, we cast our ballots, but we can have additional <coughs> influence on the outcome of who wins and loses. And um, at this point in American politics, when there's such a vast difference between our two parties, the Republicans and the Democrats, having the multiple influence means that somehow there's a special thumb on the scale for the kinds of outcomes policy outcomes that you want. It's not that you have to then communicate what you want. You get outcomes that are really different depending on whom you elect. And it, to the extent to which private money is so unregulated in the United States, mm -hmm. we don't have a problem of, particular problem of corruption. It's actually even fairly transparent. People abide by the rules. It's just that the rules allow mm -hmm. for a great deal more electoral influence by those who are able to and interested in making huge in, uh, investments in public outcomes. And it's a, it's a very diff, because there's so little public money and so much private money in the American system, mm -hmm. in a system where the sums are staggering, that we have a really different kind of problem than, than I've heard. So I was really yeah. interested to hear what you have to say, but I didn't want to contrast <laughs> a, a system that's, at this point, very different. So thank you all, and thank you to the audience for being here. Thank you very much for that comment. I was appalled when I heard during the campaign in, a, in an interview or in 